While we often imagine rattlesnakes as these large, imposing reptiles, and some of them are, today we're looking for a species that completely breaks that mold. Now, while this used to be one of the most abundant pit vipers throughout its range in Florida, the dusky pygmy rattlesnake has been experiencing widespread population declines in many areas where it used to be common, and herpetologists are doing everything they can to figure out why this is happening. Today, we're headed out in the field with Jenna Palmisano, a PhD student and herpetologist who is studying the parasites and diseases which might be having an impact on the dusky pygmy rattlesnake. I mean, I distinctly remember the first pygmy rattlesnake I, I saw um, because I went out with Terry Farrell and I was just so engrossed. I was like, I really want to find like the first one that day. I want to show them that I can find them. And I got really lucky because there was one that was just stretched out on the side of the trail. And I was like, is that one? Is that one? And they were like, yeah, that is one. And I just got really excited. Um, so I feel like that was a huge moment for me. Um, just being able to see a rattlesnake for the first time and then be able to, you know, hold it safely. Yeah, that introduction into herps was fast for me, um, but yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't get away after that. Now finding this species can be quite tricky because they have extremely cryptic coloration and of course are very small. Thankfully though, Jenna is something of an expert at finding these tiny rattlers. Waiting for a, a lizard to come by. That is awesome. Oh, thank you. I'm just gonna snap a couple of shots in situ because that's a sick posture. Yeah. He's like, I'm so good at hiding. I'm the best. I'm the best. Now that Jenna has spotted a pig, we need to safely capture and restrain the snake long enough to collect important biometric data. You don't want to go in? I try to just, when they're in ambush, like just see if I can move with them. Yeah. To be a little bit more gentle than grabbing them with the tongs. Other times, not perfect. So we're checking for a pit tag. Sometimes we get our recaps, but this guy is new. It is a way that we can mark the snake and then come back and find it later, but it is passive, so we're not tracking this animal or anything like that. So the first thing that we're going to do is be uh, take a swab to detect snake fungal diseases. So we just go up and down the body with this wet swab um, 10 times. Now we're going to take a cloacal swab and this is to detect pentastome eggs. Let's see if he'll give us some poop. We're just gonna like gently massage anything we can get out. That looks like more than urates. It's a little brown, mm, yummy. And then I'll take a look at it under the microscope and then look for eggs. And if I find any, I'll do DNA extractions on them just to be sure that it's the pentastome species, Relitella orientalis. So this is an invasive pentastome and it is speculated to have spilt over with the Burmese pythons and other intermediate hosts that are abundant in Florida have kind of allowed them to move northward. I think right now, not knowing the full like threat or the potential threat of the invasive snake lungworm to pygmy rattlesnakes here in Florida is really challenging. You know, they're also combating snake fungal disease, persecution by humans and habitat degradation. So I think the most challenging thing is just trying to keep a level head with collecting the right data to eventually fully characterize what this threat is. I am studying the genomic diversity of pygmy rattlesnakes across 13 locations and I want to know, oh my goodness, look at this little guy. Ooh. It's a little caterpillar. Oh. <laughs> Do you know who he is? I want to know if their diversity relates at all to the severity of disease and the presence of disease that we're um, seeing at these sites. Um, so we take two ventral scale clips. We'll just take the edge of it ventral scale, try to be as small as possible. Just gonna take two about that size. I'll do DNA extractions. And then there's kind of two different techniques that I'm doing to um, get at neutral diversity and um, adaptive immune diversity, which is basically our vertebrate antigen recognition system for extracellular pathogens to see kind of what the dynamics look like in systems that have both snake fungal disease as well as pentastomiasis caused by the invasive snake lungworm. 
Right now, um, Constantino is bleaching our tube and then we'll spray it down with water and we'll bleach all of the tools that touch this snake. And so the reason why we're doing this is one, we want to make sure that we're not transferring pathogens to different snakes, um, but also so that we are degrading DNA. So pathogen DNA, so we don't get a false positive on the next snake and also um, getting rid of the snake's DNA so that we're not contaminating the next sample. Jenna has recorded all the information she needs from this individual. He's so it's time so to release it back into the wild and continue sampling this site to see if we can find any more pygmies. Probably just gonna be easier to cookie him. So I don't really like, this is a yep. Yeah, a lot of times snakes in ambush just like chill out. I'm not happy. I know. Unfortunately, you don't have anywhere to go. There you go. Uh, right now we are documenting any abnormal scales. Um, so you can see throughout the ventrum of this snake, there's kind of like brown and chipped scales with some crust under it. These are pretty typical signs of snake fungal disease caused by Ophidiomyces ophidicola, which is highly prevalent in the Eastern United snakes across pretty much all snake species. So what I do is I record the size and um, characteristics of the lesion. It not only focuses on pygmy rattlesnakes, but it has kind of broader implications to the impact that this invasive snake lungworm has on other species in the southeast because 18 native snake species have been found with infections. For pygmy rattlesnakes specifically, understanding their adaptive potentials and understanding if they, you know, have the uh, potential to kind of bounce back from these threats. So I started a monitoring program known as SLAM or Snake Lungworm Alliance and Monitoring in 2022, I think, with Dr. Terry Farrell. And these collaborators are either picking up dead snakes that they find opportunistically, or if they're already handling snake for research, they'll take fecal samples or cloacal swabs. And this is helping us get an idea of where this parasite is spreading, who it's getting in the most, and if it's outside of Florida. Now ecologically, these pygmy rattlesnakes are really unique. Here in the state of Florida, pygmy rattlesnakes really are the only small vipers. And these guys are ambush predators. So they have two adaptations that actually let them land really accurate strikes. One of those is elliptical pupils, and it gives them much better depth perception compared to rounded pupils, as well as allowing them to really easily manipulate the amount of light that they're actually allowing to hit their retina. So that lets pygmy rattlesnakes really open up their pupils and hunt in low light conditions where other snakes might not be able to. Like other vipers, other pit vipers, they do have labial pits. They act like little satellite dishes that can receive infrared radiation from warm-blooded or really hot ectothermic prey items. Now, the venom that the pygmy rattlesnakes have is hemotoxic, and so it's going to attack the red blood cells of prey items, and the goal is to give them enough venom that the prey item will die without the pygmy actually having to hold on. Now, this is not a very large snake, and it might be tempting to assume that this is a baby or an immature individual, but actually this is a fully grown adult male pygmy rattlesnake. These are not often going to grow much more than around two feet long at absolute largest. And so that actually does make pygmy rattlesnakes the smallest species of rattlesnake in the world. And I think it's amazing that we have a snake that's so unique right here in our own backyards in the southeastern US. But I think that pygmy rattlesnakes deserve much more recognition for the ecologically important and just absolutely beautiful little vipers that they truly are. Well, first of all, do not persecute any snakes um, and don't persecute pygmy rattlesnakes. Don't keep wild caught animals from Florida and don't sell them in Florida or outside of Florida. I've already found three um, fatal cases in the pet trade. Oh, slam. Yeah. Yeah, so if you find, <laughs> if you find um, any roadkill um, that would be fresh enough to dissect, uh, definitely contact us. We can put the link in this video. And if you are researching snakes yourself and you want to take samples to detect if they have pentastome infection, um, contact me for sure.